Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Bible study this evening on Wednesday night. Sorry for a slight delay there. Uh, something went wrong with the iPad, so very quickly changed over onto the phone instead, just as we come together this evening for um, our Bible study. Um, I was just thinking about what we should be looking at or what we could study over these next few weeks. Um, with, no, we finished Hebrews. And as I was doing the Bible readings for this week and looking at them for this week, I was just thinking about the fact that there are so many big chapters that we skip over um, so quickly this week. The like of chapters 13, which we did today, 14 and 15 chapters, which are full of so much. Um, I just thought that'd be really good for us just to, to take some time over these next few weeks to look at what Jesus says in these couple of chapters. The plan is for these chapters to take us up until um, the end of June, God willing, um, with just the way the, all the Easter holidays work and stuff, the way the Easter breaks work. So doing it every other week at this stage now that lockdown is starting to lift. Um, so it's going to be either live streamed or videoed and then um, a time of prayer afterwards on Zoom for those who want to join in. So tonight we're going to start off in John 13. So as we come together, let's just... Um, pause and let's pray together as we um, get to this stage in our um, in our evening okay so let's pray together heavenly father we just thank you again for this evening thank you for this opportunity for us to be able to join together to be able to look at your word to be able to examine it uh, and then lord afterwards to be able to pray together um, lord We've all had busy days and, and we know that for a lot of us, uh, maybe during the day we're getting tired of the, the screens. But Lord, we thank you that in these days, whenever this lockdown continues, even though things are starting to ease, that we can still continue to meet together um, in this way. So we just ask that you would be with us now as we do meet and that we would know you close by us. So Lord, be with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Um, forgive me if I from time to time turn my head from here the phone over to the side it's just that's where i've got the other screen set up for um the zoom and as people come and, and enter into it as well then you might see me just dodging my head backwards and forwards so bear with me if i do that but tonight we're going to start off in john 13 not quite sure how far we'll get let's just see how we get on with it um but it's a it's a brilliant passage we read it today for our lent reflection game it was just a skirt through it um, at a very short period of time but let me read to you at this stage just the first 17 verses of John chapter 13. Before the, fa the Passover celebration Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to the Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon, Peter Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my, he my hands and my head as well. Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean and you disciples are clean but not all of you for Jesus knew who would betray him that's what he meant whenever he said not all of you are clean after washing their feet he put on his robe again and sat down and asked do you understand what I am doing you call me teacher and lord and you're right because that's what I am and since I your lord and teacher have washed your feet you ought to wash others feet I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are no greater than their masters. Nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. 
Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. We'll pause there. Jesus, or John, as he, as he starts to write this part of the story, sets the scene. He tells us that it's the Passover celebration. Um, it's a very, it, it is the most important time in the Jewish calendar as they think about how God rescued them from Egypt um, and about what happened in that. You know, as you think about the death that came into Egypt, but how death passed over and God's children because of the blood that was on the doorpost and the lintels, because of the sacrifice that had made and how they were ready to go um, at a moment's notice, sleeping with um, their cloaks on them, their belts tied around their waist, their sandals on, ready just whenever Moses said, let's go, to jump up and go. So it, it is such a special time of the year for God's people. Um, it's the pinnacle of uh, their, their calendar. I suppose that makes me reflect upon the pinnacle of our calendar. Um, you know, we, we do so much in church around Christmas time and we have such a build up at Christmas time. Whenever we have our, or we have a Christmas tree in it, we have our Advent wreath and we have our four weeks leading up to um, the four Sundays beforehand, the four Sundays of, of, of Advent as we talk about it in, in church and as we, as we work towards that. And, you know, sometimes we think oh, Christmas is so important and we do make so much about it and we have special services when actually the pinnacle of our time in church is Easter. Christmas is only the beginning of Christ's journey here on earth, whereas Easter, it's what the journey is all about. It's this final part of the journey, which, you know, as we say, the rubber hits the road. This is the crunch time. This is what it's all about. This is the importance of it. And I suppose we can't emphasise too much the importance of Easter to us. Because Easter is our salvation. Easter is the time whenever we are made right with God because of what Jesus has done. So this is the pinnacle for us as Christians of our calendar as well. And it's important just to, to keep that in mind as we think about it. Again, John sets the scene by talking about um, how Jesus knew it had already come to leave this world and return to the Father. He knew his death was coming. He loved the disciples during his ministry on earth and he loved them to the very end. That love never ended. And again, that's really important because that love is for all of his disciples, including the one who's named now, Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, the one who we know betrays Jesus, the one who we know sells Jesus out for silver, for money in his pocket, um, and then regrets what he has done. Jesus even loved Judas. You know, and that is so important for us to grasp as well. None of us are unlovable in God's eyes. None of us are beyond redemption if we will simply trust Christ. You know, we're, it's a washing of the feet coming up and Jesus washes all the disciples' feet. Judas is still there. He hasn't left at this point in time. Uh, so Judas has his feet washed just like the rest of the disciples because Jesus is still reaching out to him. Because Jesus is still saying to him, you have a choice to make here, Judas. You can either be for me or you can be against me and betray me. We know what he does. Spoiler alert. We know the end of the story. We know that Judas betrays Jesus and that's all part of the journey. Again, it's fulfillment of scripture. But Judas does have that choice. Um, it's, a, it's a hard thing sometimes to get into our head. Um, how can Judas be the chosen one to betray Jesus but also... How could he still have had free will? But it's all about how God sees things. About how God can look forward and back in time. And he can see who will choose him and not choose him. He can see who will who will exercise that free will to accept him or not accept him. Um, and that's a hard thing for us to get our heads around. But that's for another time as we start to discuss things like election and such like. Um, but for now it's just knowing that Jesus continues to reach out. To Judas, he doesn't give up on him, and it's the same for us. We should never give up on anybody. Um, when we're showing them God's love, we should keep on showing them. I know that's really hard. I know that's really difficult. I know, especially in our country, it's such a difficult thing to do. Um, to to keep on reaching out and to keep on showing love, but it's what we are called to do. We're called to show the love of Christ and the love of God. And that's love, 
which knows no limits, no bounds. It's endless. And that's what we're called to do. Um, so yeah, it's a challenge, isn't it? To be able to do that. It's a challenge to um, to think about that, uh, to, to just to try and get our heads around it. Um, yeah, but think about that. And then Jesus does something amazing. He's got to wash the feet. So what do, what do you think about washing? What's your views on washing? Um, I suppose in this day and age, we see um, cleanliness is next to godliness, the use of phrase that we use. Um, but it hasn't always been that way. At one stage in um, Victorian Britain, uh, if you were smelly through BO, you were thought to be rich because you had lots of clothes. Whereas if you were clean, you were poor because you only had one set of clothes and you had to keep on washing them all the time. Um, so to, to be clean, um, smelling, was to be from the underprivileged. But in this instance, cleaning means something else. Uh, the whole way through the Old Testament, and as you look at God's laws, and as he lays down his laws for his people, about cleanliness and about being clean and about being sacrificially clean and about sacrifices being clean, um, there's a whole lot about washing. Um, if, I mean, if you're reading Le Leviticus and even reading about burnt offerings and sin offerings that are coming, um, how those offerings have to be washed, have to be clean, and they have to be the best to be presented. So Jesus does something here to, to sort of signify cleanliness, to signify spiritual cleanliness. He starts to wash his disciples' feet. Now, remember that in a household, whenever this happened, either it would have been the lowest of the lowest slave in the house that would wash the feet, or if um, a host wanted to show his guests how much he cared about them, um, then quite often it would have been his eldest son who actually washed the feet because it was then that you were being honoured because the son had washed your feet. Um, that's part of whenever you think of the story of the, the, the two brothers, the, prodigal, the, the, the parable of the prodigal son, the eldest son should have come in from the field when his father called because those honoured guests, he would have been responsible for helping to get their feet washed and such like, but he didn't, he neglected his duty. Whereas Christ humbles himself. He's, he's the most important person in that room. And the disciples know it. They know that this is their master, their teacher, their Messiah. And yet, he's the one who washes their feet. Um, the implication is that the disciples are there on the room with Jesus. There's no other servants there. There's nobody else. They, they have organised the, the Passover. They've got it all together. Yes, they've got the room off somebody and, and they've got the food together so that they can celebrate this together. And then Jesus suddenly begins to take off his, his outer garments. His, he takes off his robe. He ties a towel around his feet. And you can, the, the silence in the room is deafening. You, you can just imagine that silence. as the, They're all in disbelief and they're all looking at each other. Are you going to say something? No, are you going to say something? No, I'm not going to say something. Well, here, don't worry about it. Simon Peter's down the line. He always says something. And through the form, it is Peter who opens his mouth and says something. And when he asks that question, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus' reply is incredible. You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. You know, and that sums up so much about our journey with Christ. So much of what happens to us and what we do and what we're called to do we don't understand we don't know how it all fits together we don't know its relevance we don't know why did that have to happen lord and quite often we we call out and we ask questions about things like that but we've got to realize that god has the plan the master plan and he knows what's happening and Jesus says that very clearly, to, to, not just to Peter, but to all the disciples to hear it. You don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. Now, I'm sure that after Jesus' death and resurrection, they realised some of it. But I'm also certain that they didn't realise all of it until they reached heaven. And it's the same for us. 
There are some things that as we go on through life, we talk about the benefit of hindsight and we can look back and go, now I can see God why you allowed that to happen. And now I can see God why you caused that to happen or, or why that thing came into my life, why I had that experience. Because I can see how it taught me or how I was able to come alongside somebody else. We can, we can piece part of it together. But there's so much that we will not get until we reach glory. There's so much of what goes on in this life that we just cannot um, understand. You know, and yeah, as somebody has just posted, I, I need to understand everything. That's the way we are. We want to know everything. We are those sort of people. But God says to us at times, with the greatest respect, people, you don't need to know that. I know that. And that's what God says to us. He says, look, don't worry about it. I know you're worrying, but don't leave it with me. How good are you at leaving it with God? We're not, are we? It's like we often say, whenever we have worries and concerns, the phrase that we quite often say is, leave it with the Lord. But how often do we bring something to God and we leave it with him? And five minutes later, we pick it back up again and we start to worry about it again, don't we? Or the next day, we find ourselves waking up and we're, we're, we're worried about something again. It's our, it's our, it is our nature. But we need to keep on coming back and handing it over. We need to keep on reminding ourselves, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. And we need to, to leave that with, with God. Jesus, P Peter protests, no, you will never ever wash my feet. That's the way the New Living Translation puts it. it, it trying to get across the, the, the strength of what Peter is saying. You will never wash my feet, Jesus. Peter thought that it was beneath Jesus' station to wash his feet. You know, it should have been the other way around. And Jesus gently says, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Or unless I wash you, you can have no part of me or no part of what I am doing. Jesus says to Peter, I have to wash you for you to be involved, for you to be part of my family, for you to be part of what's happening. And then Peter says, well, let wash all of me, Lord. Not just my feet, but my, head, my hands, my head. Wash all of me, Lord. And Jesus says, the person who is bathed all over does not need to wash except for his feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, although not all of you. The disciples, the ones who followed Jesus around, they are the first Christians. Um, even though they don't realise it, they are the first followers of Christ what a christian is you know we have all sorts of fancy sayings born again believer i'm saved but the word christian is a follower of christ uh, and it means so much more than that word born again or saved um again born again is in the bible but it's, it's, it's the understanding of being a christian it's the understanding of what it means to fully follow christ and Jesus has said, I've already washed you. So they're saved, if you want to use that term, or they're Christians. But Jesus wants to wash their feet. And it's 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 metaphorical. Um and, and this is this is what I really love about this. This this is this particular part. I I love what it, the meaning of it, the um, the implication of it. So you go out, you had a bath, you went on a journey in those days. The roads weren't like our roads. They weren't nicely tarmacked and nice footpaths. They were dusty. They were dirty. They were muddy when it rains. So the bit of you that got dirty was your feet. You were wearing open-toed sandals. Or maybe you were even barefooted. Um, if you didn't have enough money for sandals or your sandals that worn out, you couldn't replace them. So the thing, the part of you that's going to be dirty when you get to somebody's house is your feet. Um, to signify that you didn't want to bring any dirt into the person's house, they really should have a basin at the door where you can wash your feet. Um, our modern example, sorry, excuse me, is a doormat. And we wipe our feet on the doormat so we don't carry the dirt into the house. In those days, it was washing somebody's feet. But the implication of what Jesus is saying is that as we go through life, and after we've been saved and we've been washed, we've been made right with God, we continue to get things wrong. We continue to sin and, and do things that we shouldn't do. So we need to be refreshed by God. 
And, and that's what Jesus is doing. He's refreshing the feet of his disciple. He's washing them. And it's that implication, that note of, you know, it's, it's, it's that thing about, you know, whenever we do things wrong, come and ask and say to God, like, I'm really sorry for doing that. And help me not to do it again. Sometimes we will. Sometimes we will do it again. Sometimes it's, it's in our nature because of sin. Um, other times we will learn and we will stop. And it's all about that process of, of handing it continually over to God so that he will help us not to sin. So that he is changing us into new creatures. Uh, and that's part of that whole process of how he does that. And it's incredible to think about what he does for us. And you know, there's nothing nice. I don't know, if, if you've ever had a hard day and you've been on your feet or maybe you've been out walking and you come home and all you want to do is soak your feet. Have you ever had that? Or maybe at some stage in the past you've had a foot spa. Maybe you still have a foot spa and you can put something nice and refreshing into it. Maybe some essential oils. Um, or maybe you like to put Epsom salts into it and soak your feet in that. And just how that refreshes you. It relaxes you. And it just, you feel reinvigorated. Well, it's the same with Jesus. Whenever we hand everything over to him and whenever we ask him to forgive us, how we are reinvigorated and we, we get that oomph to get up and get going again. You know, and we, we are encouraged to do that. And, and Jesus is trying to refresh his disciples. He's trying to help his disciples. He's trying to encourage them to keep on going. You know, and then he tells them, do the same for others. Teach them. Show them my love. Show them my will. And keep, you know, spur them on to keep following me. And remember... You're a messenger. You're not more important than the message. You're the messenger or, or you're the servant. You're not greater than God, than my father, but my father's the greatest. So we serve him and we serve him by bringing the good news, by helping each other, by showing his love, by walking with each other through this journey. And at the very end of that little section, because now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Imagine, as we do God's will, he blesses us. As we serve him, he blesses us. As we show his love to others, he blesses us. As we help each other, he blesses us. Wow. To be blessed by God. It's an incredible thought, isn't it? It's a special thought. It's the best thought. How can I help others so it helps them, so God blesses me and that spurs me on so I can help others to know that I'm doing God's will, that I'm following his path, that I'm doing what he wants us to do. Yeah. Let's leave it there for tonight with those thoughts. There's a lot of challenges in that. There's a lot of encouragement as well about how God loves us and cares for us and never gives up on us. But there's a lot of challenges about how we help others. And that we're doing it for the right reason. It's not that we, we simply want God to bless us, but to be involved in what he's doing, knowing that um, we are doing what, what Christ really wants us to do. Knowing that we are following God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for your word. Thank you again for what Jesus did. How he, how he washed his disciples' feet. How he showed them what, what it meant to serve others. But also how he showed them what it meant to come back and say sorry for the things that we had done wrong to be refreshed. So Lord, we pause just now to say sorry to you. Lord, this day we've done things which are wrong. Father, forgive us. Lord, today we have missed opportunities to speak about you. We have done things that we shouldn't have done. And other things that we should have, we haven't. Lord, well, it's in our actions or our language and, and, and different things that we've done. We know that there are areas that we have we have strain from you and we have fallen so forgive us lord let your refreshing love
flow over us. May you wash our feet. May we be reinvigorated to follow you. Lord, come now, we pray. In Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in. Thanks for being with us. Um, we'll do this again in two weeks' time, when we'll continue in John 13. And afterwards, we have a time of prayer on Zoom. So if you'd like to join us in that, Zoom details you can get either from myself or from Barbara in the office. Um, just let me know and we can give you that. You don't have to have any special app or anything for Zoom. All you've got to do is have an internet connection. Um, it's just a website and you go on to it and you put in um, details of a meeting number and a password and then it lets you in. So if it's something that you want to do, then please, you'll be very welcome to join us again in two weeks. But in the meantime, for the folks here on Facebook, take care and God bless.